If you're looking to improve your short game, a chipper might be the route to go. Today, Thomas and I are on the golf course. We've got four chippers with us today from four different brands. We're gonna test them out and tell you which one is right for you. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing Minnetonka. We're on the practice area here at Les Bolstead Golf Course. And we have clubs that we haven't really featured on the channel before. Uh, we've got chippers. Uh, the nice thing about chippers is that it can make chipping really easy, hence the name chipper probably. Um, but they're not really popular. And I think they're, it's, they're starting to become popular. A lot of golfers are realizing that these things can be really effective in certain scenarios. So um, we've got four of them today. Thomas, uh, I mean, you got a couple in your hand. They're very different than you're used to looking at. Um, it's, it's a lot of loft and a lot of mass going on here, but talk to me about chippers in general, um, I guess where they can be effective, what type of golfers they can be effective for, and then maybe what you see out of these four initially. Yeah, I mean, they're really like kind of like a replacement for your seven or eight iron yeah. where you may play a chip and run yeah. type of shot, except now all you need to do is get in your putting stance right. and play your putting stroke and the ball kind of pops up and then rolls like yep. a putt. Yeah, I think it's, you've been uh, you know, on the channel before talking about your kind of bump and run uh, math equation that you use sometimes on the course. <laughs> and so these clubs are designed to kind of make, you know, execute that type of shot. So um, what we have, we have four models. We've got the Ping Chipper. We've got the Cleveland Smart Soul 4. Uh, we've got the Tour Edge HL4 Chipper and the Odyssey X-Act Chipper. So a few kind of popular brands there, right? Um, but I think you look at the appearance of these chippers and they are extremely different. Uh, I've got two of the smaller uh, models in terms of head size in my hand, the Ping Chipper and the Smart Soul 4. Then you've got kind of the bigger uh, club head profile there with the, the X-Act and the Tour Edge HL4. Yeah, I mean the, the Ping Chipper is, is kind of more traditional to yeah, look, look at, it really I guess. Is. Mm -hmm. uh, it, almost, it almost looks like an iron, mm -hmm. um, but then you move your way over to you know that the HL4 <laughs> chipper. Yeah. This is um, this is like a spaceship. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of yeah. like a. It looks almost like it's a. It's the club head of like a seven wood almost, or yeah. an, even a nine wood, and they've just super lofted it. Um, but the idea with all these clubs is to help golfers with these short, probably sub 30 yard shots, just get the ball on the green and let the ball roll. They do it differently, right? This this ping one, like you mentioned, a little more traditional look. Um, it's designed to basically let golfers use a putting stroke with it. Uh, but the nice thing about it, they have Micromax grooves like their irons, but like the putter, the, fa the, the height of the face is a little bit shallower. Yep. With the Cleveland Smart Soul 4, you have a sole very similar to their other wedges in that kind of Smart Soul family. And then of course their uh, milled grooves that they have in their wedges. With the Tour Edge HL4, you mentioned it, just a massive sole to help get that ball into the air, super forgiving. With the X-Act, uh, the primary design there is the tank weighting, they call it. So yep. a little heavier weight, and you probably feel it in the club head to make sure you get a kind of a consistent, smooth motion in that, that stroke. So um, a lot to test out there. Uh, I'm kind of curious. I mean, we're just going to kind of hit a few chip shots here, and we're going to see your feedback and kind of, you know, if there's any differences, maybe some feel differences, maybe some performance differences to look at. Yeah, that, let's take a look here. You know, I would, I would expect, you know, they're probably going to land and have top spin and roll towards the hole right. like, a, like a putt. So it'll be a good comparison here. We've got about a 15 yard chip shot here. I'm going to probably intensely just chip just, just out of the rough. Yeah. Because um, normally if you're in the fringe, you probably just putt it yeah. anyway. Yeah. But if you're in the rough, you actually need to get the ball yeah. airborne. Right. Um, let's see how they perform and see, just give some feedback. Perfect. All right, so Thomas, um, what would you be, I guess, looking for in a club like this? I mean, because you, you mentioned that you do kind of use the bump and run shot on the course. So I imagine this is, I mean, that's what this club is designed to do, the, these kind of chippers, right? Yeah, I mean, you talk about the line goal. The line goal is a little bit more upright, kind of mm -hmm. like a putter. So naturally, you're able to stand closer and get yep. your eye position to be kind of right over the ball. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for that. And I, I'm guessing, you know, these are all different sizes and shapes because there's different sizes and shapes of putters. Right. There's and like your blade type of golfer mm -hmm. and then there's your mallet type of golfer. Exactly. And um, we actually should note the loft differences too. So um, both of those in your hand are 37 degrees of loft. Yep. Um, so that in today's standard, that's probably eight to nine iron probably it's in better, there somewhere. Yeah, depending on the, the technology. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um, the ping chipper is 38 and a half. And then interesting, actually the smart sole here from Cleveland is 42. So okay. 
probably about a club up in terms of loft here with this one. So um, you might see a little bit more elevation from the ball. All right, so for the test, I'll hit about three shots with each okay. one and we'll just get, provide some feedback on mm -hmm. how it comes off the face and how they perform. Sure. Ooh. Definitely came out with some top spin. Yeah, it did. It didn't take long for it to start rolling, uh, right. I guess with that kind of end over end look to it. That was right at the target, just a, just a touch hard, a little more top spin than I was expecting. Same thing. Yeah, it comes off. It comes yeah. off pretty hot. Mm -hmm. and it could be. I mean, it, it's there's some extra mass there. I imagine with that kind of a bigger club head profile there. Right. I definitely don't have to feel like I have to get my hands forward. No. With with this club. Well, this should be pretty close. Better. I might go in. Yep. Drop. Not it. bad. One out of three. One out of three with the Tour Edge <laughs> HL4. <laughs> pretty good. All <laughs> right. Proof. So, do you want to stay in the big club head? Uh, range here, or do you want to go to something smaller? Let's, let's change it up okay. first here. Let's go yep. to ping here. Okay. So you got set, the ping at chipper here. The bar is being set high. Yeah, you got, we made one out of three, a couple past the pin a little bit. So this one looks wildly different, I'm sure, down there at address. Yeah, I mean, this looks, like we said, more traditional. It's like I've got my eight iron in my hands, yep. and I'm choking down on it. Yes. Also, the lie angle is, I believe, 70 degrees, so okay. it's very standard for a, for a putter lie yep. angle. Yeah, it came off a little softer. Yeah, it seemed like it was it was softer, but also it, it took a little bit longer, it felt like, to kind of start rolling like a putt, essentially. Yep. Yeah, it comes off yeah. face a little softer. I mean, the nice thing with these is you're <laughs> you're hitting all of these right by the hole, and you're right. basically tapping. So the idea with all these is to just have an easy chip and putt. So. Yeah, and I would say comparing the two to start with, this was more consistent off yeah. the face, so I feel like I could control the distance control better. Yeah. Where the Tor Edge, yeah, I made one, but the first couple off the face came off really, really hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I think Micromax grooves, again, that's more of a, f we've talked about that as sort of a full swing, keep things consistent, but maybe there's something there in terms of the short game shots here, making sure there's a you know, uh, consistent, uh, I guess, performance off the club face, right? So. Right. Um, all right, let's go back to a bigger profile here. Let's go to the Odyssey X Axe. Okay. And uh, um, do you feel that weight difference as you grab that club versus the ping? Yeah, I mean, in the hands, it feels it feels a little a little heavier to mm -hmm. me. Yeah, swinging swinging the club feels a little heavier. Grip's a little bigger as well. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah, more traditional. Stroke. Yep. Grip. You got a super stroke grip on here. So really, take the hands out of play. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, right on line. Might have a uh, stymie, stymie myself. Yeah, <laughs> you got to go walk up and move that now. <laughs> I will say, I think almost all these shots have started on line. It's been more of a kind of managing the speed and how quickly the ball turns over to start rolling. Right. And I think the difference in weight with these clubs is going to yeah. change that. Once you get used to it, you'll mm -hmm. understand it better. Same no, thing. Right on line. Right on line. Yep. Get to the hole. Seems very easy to repeat kind of the motion. It's just an, on the course, it's going to be a matter of obviously how far away someone is from the hole and how much roll there is to do, but. <sighs> those are, hey, very, those are all once, yeah, maximum very consistent, away from right? the hole. Yeah, they're just short on line every single time. All right, so last one here, and this is something I mean, I'm going to make sure you, I note again, the loft here is 42 on the Smart Soul 4. So okay. um, keep that in mind here. You have an extra four to five degrees of loft. It does, it does look like it when you yeah. put it down. Mm -hmm. Yep, came off a little higher and a little softer. Yeah, it did. Interesting. It just kind of yeah. hops and skids a little bit more because yep. of that extra loft, but it did, it almost like checked up a little bit. It almost did. Yeah, it's a lot higher. Yeah, it is. Come on, one time. Ooh. I would, I would imagine, I would, uh, again, I, if we're bringing TrackMan out and, you know, <laughs> testing with TrackMan on these chip shots, we'd see a pretty high spin number here with this club compared to the others. Yeah. That might do it. Oh, almost knocked another one in. 
Interesting. So while we're here, let's just wrap up the, the testing portion here. Um, is there, did you notice anything in particular about the four? You know, I mean, we talked through kind of all of it, but and I, I noticed like the Tour Edge, for example, you kind of blitzed a little bit, you know, three feet by the hole, whatever, the first yep. two, and then you sank one. Um, and then you kind of were short actually with the ping on all three of those. So was that just a mass thing or was it kind of a getting, I mean, getting used to sort of the feel of how firm to, to chip it, I guess. Yeah, the Tour Edge was hot off the face. Yeah. It felt like it landed and it took off. And you're thinking, you see, there was two clubs that I used that I didn't even get the ball to the hole with two of them. Yeah. But they were very, very consistent every single time. Yeah. So I could adjust to it, but they just felt a little softer off the mm -hmm. face. Um, I'd say the two easiest to control were probably the Pink Chipper and the, the Odyssey okay. in, in, your, in your hand there. Yep. Um, but yeah, the X Act. Yeah, the X -act. X Act. Yeah, so I mean, it, it felt heavier, but also felt pretty easy to control. Yeah, because I think their idea is kind of, you know, to promote consistent uh, a stroke here and smooth, right? Not, you don't need you to use your wrist with any of these clubs, really, but right. in particular, I think that's what they're trying to remove here in the in the X Act. Yeah, and this guy, the extra five degrees, it yeah. made a big difference on it the did. performance. Like, yeah. it, it popped up quite a lot higher and stopped a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. You do kind of skid and almost checked a couple times, too, which with the same grooves as on the Cleveland wedges, it makes sense that you might see some of that reaction on the green. Right. So to kind of conclude here, I know there are some differences we saw. I think the most important thing though is that these chippers are gaining popularity. This type of club uh, in the player that, you know, might struggle with their wedges, might need a little more forgiveness and help around the greens, um, getting it close on chip shots. These clubs can come in handy, but we did see some differences there. So I guess, in the players that you maybe fit, right? Maybe you do wedge fittings um, and you see a player that you think might struggle. Um, what type of golfer is that usually? I mean, I think about a golfer that's really active with their hands, very wristy, yeah. um, having a hard time with chipping and trying to get the body all kind of turned together. Um, with this club, all you can need to do is kind of rock the shoulder and hit like a putt. Yeah. So it's very, very simple. Um, it helps get you in a good position setup wise. So if you have a hard time with posture, that'll be another option there too, mm -hmm. because it just gets you in that position to be able to hit a chip shot. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think you'd want to, say, replace all your wedges for chippers. Yeah. But uh, even one, and, and one as one is an option in your yeah. bag, is it's it's surprisingly really easy to yeah. use. Yeah. You know, and I think there's also something to, um, I don't want to say, quote unquote, beginners, but I think we've you've noticed even over time that there's golfers at a certain level that don't necessarily need 14 clubs in the bag, or they don't need all those weapons, they might use a couple clubs once, maybe every few rounds, where you can easily slide in a chipper, and in addition to the wedges maybe in your bag, and it can still be very functional. Yeah, and at the end of the day, golf club's designed to try and get the ball in the hole, and it's just another option out there in the market. Mm -hmm. For sure, well, golfers, uh, that's kind of our test here on these four chippers. They're all very effective on these short shots, but in their own unique way. And so uh, if you're interested in any of these four chippers that we tested today, make sure you visit secondswing.com and uh, talk with one of our online fitting and support team members. They'll talk you through everything you need to know about the specs and the performance and the technology within these, and they'll set up you with the right one in your bag. So Thomas, thanks for hitting the chip shots today and giving your feedback on some clubs you really don't do a whole lot of testing on, but uh, really good stuff today. <laughs> Not a problem.